Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the workshop. Fantastic to have you here because on today's episode, I want to see can I forge weld steel to titanium? Thank you for joining me. Before we get started, we're going to flash back and thank our sponsor, Squarespace, which is the easy to use website building platform that I use and love. My website, alexsteelblacksmith.com, is built with Squarespace. I've been using it so long, and it's a thrill to have them sponsoring this video because it means that you guys will be able to get 10% off your first purchase with them after it is that you also get a free trial going to squarespace.com forward slash forge. Thank you Squarespace for sponsoring the video. Let us get right into it. So here is some titanium and here's what I want to do. I'm going to take this. Oh look at that. Isn't that handy? Got a little bit of text on there. I was actually given this piece a while ago from a guy who works in a prosthetics factory. Like you know where they make the titanium hip replacements. Oh, so the other part of this bar is in somebody's hip. Is it yours? Anyway, I'm going to take this piece of titanium and I'm going to flatten this down into some bar that we can then mill clean. And I want to try and sandwich some steel with titanium either side. And of course, as you know, titanium is not steel. And you've seen me put steel with other alloys of steel. And you've seen me put copper and nickel together. Can you put titanium and steel together? I don't know. I think somebody's done it. But actually, I do know that somebody has done this. Bill Burke has done this. I don't have any idea how he's done this. I know you can get titanium to titanium and make Damascus, which I can't make because there is a patent on the process. I've just got to find out how it is that you get titanium with steel. And I've got to find out if the bond is even strong enough for us to be able to forge it after the fact that we potentially get it to stick. I have no idea. So it's all very much up in the air right now, especially because we don't even know if this alloy of titanium is going to forge. We don't know anything. Well, aside from this, I understand titanium can be a little bit uh, volatile with heat and pressure. So we do know that it'd be good to employ a pretty, uh, pretty decent level of uh, health and safety right here. So let's break it down into something manageable. Well, that wasn't so bad at all. So here's what it looks like right now. You'll see there's a cold shut right there from the forging. And it's also got this really interesting, almost orangey oxide to it. There's another cold shut right there, and it seemed to happen really easily. That's just where a little piece of metal folds over while breaking it down. That generally happens when I take a bite too large out of it while forging it. This is straight off of the hammer, and so I presume there are all sorts of stresses in there. I don't know how to deal with titanium. But regardless, I'm just gonna heat it up, and then we'll let it air cool. You remember when I did my little collaboration with Rooney with Alex, French guy cooking, we had nodded the head of the mill all the way to 45 degrees. So now, I mean, I've put it back up. I haven't completely trammed it in. Oh, look at that machinist lingo there. <laughs> okay, sorry. Just in case you didn't know, tramming the head of the mill in is making sure that even though the mill goes this way and that way and this way and that way, we have adjusted it so that it is perfectly square to the table in this orientation and this orientation. Even though we only moved it in this orientation, I still need to validate that it's all good in this orientation. And so the way I'm going to do that is I've got this on a collet block. We're now at 10. I'll put the collet block back on. We're now at 14, 20, 0. Start again. I bumped it. Start again. 100, 90 up. We'll call it 105. Oh, hello. 95. 100. Now this is a tense indicator. The biggest outlier is this way and that way, and it is tilted this way. So what I need to do is tilt it back that way. All right, this is cooled down. Wow, that's light. In we go. I'm gonna throw a parallel under that. Okay. Did I mention I've never milled titanium before? Let's see how it goes. Well, hey, that wasn't so bad. It's doing it.
work, it's not going so, so well. I do not like the amount of sparks that are coming off this thing. I've already had to put out one fire. Like I said earlier, titanium is dangerous. I'm now gonna mess with the speeds and feeds to see if we can sort that out. That's a little better. So there I went really fast on the feed with a slightly spur, slightly slower RPM. We're not all the way through the scale though. So back at it we go. That's much better, far less sparks. It's taking a much cleaner cut, much quieter. I like that. We've got ourselves through the oxide layer. It's now time to flip it over. I do the same on the, I'm shouting, aren't I? We're gonna do the same on the other side. Here we go. This thing is all milled up. We got some clean faces to work with. Here is some 1080 stock that I uh, that I use when I make my normal Damascus. I kind of think the thickness disparity is a little bit too much. I want to take something that's a little bit thicker. And I believe somewhere over here I got some 1095. There we go. So I'm going to put it in the store. I'm going to cut off a piece. There we go. Now that is a funky piece of flat bar. Titanium, steel, we need four pieces of titanium and two pieces of steel. So it's into the band, so we go. Oh, it doesn't seem to like titanium very much. <laughs> uh oh. Ooh. Oh, no, it's working. Well, 13 minutes later, it still hasn't cut it. Let's see if I put extra pressure on the saw. Maybe more speed. There we go. At last. It did not like that at all. I think we might have to go ahead and try and use an abrasive disc. Ah, you know what? I probably already destroyed the blade. We might as well destroy it some more. We're gonna stay on the bandsaw. Well, I just snapped a blade. <laughs> That's not good. You might be questioning my wisdom as to why I was cutting this rectangle up on end in a bandsaw. But the reason I was doing that, even though that wrist stripping teeth, was I wasn't getting enough tooth pressure, enough pressure in the cut with it sideways. Was it the right choice? Probably not, because we did just snap a blade. It's now time to go to the abrasives. <laughs> six pieces of steel, two of which are 1095, two of which are titanium. We now need to get these ready to then go in the fire, but the thing is, is that the oh, the, 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 the titanium is gonna oxidize when it heats up and it won't stick, supposedly. That's what I guess, at least, from my understanding of how it is that people make titanium Damascus, where you're doing different types of titanium together to make a Damascus. They always seem to be very concerned about oxygen getting in between the welding surfaces. I presume I should be too when I'm trying to stick titanium and steel together. So, we're gonna make sure that these surfaces are scotch brighted clean. We're gonna clamp them up nice and tight, and then I'm gonna fusion TIG between the titanium, the steel, and the other titanium. Just puddle all over it all, so that it's all sealed up, so that we can go into the forge which I'm gonna light now, and heat them up and see at which temperatures it likes to stick. Okay, it's go time. I'm opening up the forge. We're gonna scoot it inside, let it heat up. Now, this really is risky stuff. Of all the things that I do, this is the one definitely not to emulate because it can go pop and boom and explode. Don't do it. Titanium is dangerous. You can set fire to things, and when titanium fires start, they don't tend to go out too easily. I'm gonna start at a lower temperature at about a light orange and see if it'll stick then. <laughs> Problem. Right as I went into the dies, they hit it. This old machine, the RAM doesn't stay up all the time. 
giant that might have destroyed our chances of a successful bomb. Give it another go. This is what it currently looks like. That fused material on the edges that we used to seal it up, it's all crumbled away. As you can see, it looks rather gnarly. Let's take another heat, keep hammering it some more. Here we go. This is super interesting because it's not showing signs of coming apart. There is no more fusion TIG weld holding it together. It is just some sort of the bond that we've created. Unless it's just hanging on by practically nothing. Let's see if a chipping hammer will break this off. Wow, look at those sparks. That combination of the steel and the titanium from fusing it together caused this really funky material that likes to crack, that likes to spark when you hit it. Look at those beautiful blues from the titanium oxide. Oh, it broke apart. No, no! Look at that, it just came apart. That's the titanium and that's the steel. It's a failure. It has not worked. <gasps> da, da, da. Have a look at those beautiful colors on that titanium oxide surface though. Just stunning. You'll see the steel is more concave and the titanium is more convex, which is interesting because of course the steel moves easier than the titanium at temperature. So while we were trying to hammer them together, that steel was dipping down, being formed by the tougher titanium. Crazy stuff. How weird looking is that? There are some seriously vibrant blues in that titanium oxide. Okay, so back to the drawing board it is. We have our second set of pieces. What am I gonna do different this time? I'm gonna try going hotter to see if that's gonna get us a better, uh, a better moment for the two pieces, the two materials, to have some sort of a bond together. The danger is though, like I said earlier, titanium likes to explode and set fire to things. Which is why this is a bad idea to go hotter, but we're gonna try it. What's the worst that happens? What's the worst that happens? Okie dokie, attempt number two. We're gonna aim for a light yellow heat. There we go! I still predict total failure. I just like hitting things. That did not work either. Failure. So it looks like I'm gonna be on fire watch for the next hour after that little shower of sparks there, but we're all good. And I was protected enough that it wasn't too bad, but you shouldn't try that. This is a dangerous one to be doing in the home shop. I presume the better way to do this is to do it in a can like they make titanium Damascus. But again, there's a pattern on that process. And so I'm trying to be respectful to that, to not be doing commercial activity based around something that's patented. It'd be a bad idea. It's actually pretty interesting. What they'll do when they're making the titanium Damascus is they'll stack up their layers of titanium and they'll purge it with argon as it heats up. It's some super interesting stuff though, that's for sure. And I know it's possible. We just didn't make it work today. You got any good ideas that are founded in reality and not just pure imagination as to how it is that this might be better? Drop a comment down below. If you've also got an idea for some other metals for me to try and put together, smash and see if they stick, let me know in a comment also. If you're new, hit subscribe. I'm going to thank our sponsor for making this all happen. Again, I want to thank today's sponsor, which is Squarespace. It's the website building platform that my website, alexsealblacksmith.com, is built on. You see, it's pretty awesome. There is a video that plays on the banner, and it just always looks beautiful. And the great thing is, I have no idea how to code anything. And despite that, yesterday, when I made this part of the website here, for a one month paid internship position, it was super easy and I was able to create this. See, this is my favorite part. I was able to create this form block where I asked people all sorts of questions. All sorts of questions, everything from a link to a one minute video introduction about themselves to what grit they are. What grit are you? 36, 80, 220, 2000? Let me know. And it's super simple to do with Squarespace because you can completely customize the forms from all sorts of different options. It's stress free, which is exactly what you want when you're building your own website to showcase your brand, showcase you, showcase your business. So get started.
building your website today at squarespace.com forward slash forge. There is a link in the description and that will take you right there where you can get a free trial and when you make your purchase, you're gonna be able to get 10% off. Thank you Squarespace for sponsoring the video, for making my website so easy to build. And of course, thank you for watching. I can't wait to see you very soon.